All right, a little bit of words of caution here. If you're not familiar with HVAC, please make sure you get a professional. I knew in this case, just by deduction, that it was the blower and the motor, and I'm quite familiar with that. Um, I'm not as familiar with gas. I can shut it on or off, but I can't work on gas or pipelines. So if you smell gas and you're not certified to work with that, make sure you call a professional, shut it off, um, and make sure you get out of the house. Um, be sure to shut off the gas and power while you're working on the furnace. Don't forget and validate that the power is actually shut off by using a multimeter. Turn on your fan and blower motor and you should not have any current. And of course, you should have everything shut off via the uh, circuit breaker as I did. Uh, as far as the tools that you're going to need, first and foremost, digital camera, please, please, please take a thousand pictures. Make sure you use flash, verify before you unplug anything. I made a huge error, and if I hadn't seen it in the picture, I wouldn't have been able to get it fixed, and I would have had to pay a professional to come in, move one wire from one to the other, because what was written on the board was not right. So make sure you have a multimeter, cleaning rags, screws, and everything on this list. Uh, AC unit. Unfortunately, uh, conked out. I took it apart and figured out that uh, the most probable reason is this uh, motor right here. Um, I heard it stop once and it was squealing, and a couple times when I uh, heard it trying to turn on, you could hear a humming from the induction, but nothing was turning. Uh, so I heavily suspect that it's it's the motor. Uh, so I just received my replacement a couple days later, so I'm super stoked about that because I don't have any heat in the house um, other than, of course, the electric heater. And then in addition to that, I figured if I'm taking this all apart, who knows how old this thing is. I also purchased <coughs> a starting capacitor uh, as well. So if you're curious, there's the uh, model number. So I just purchased uh, a brand new one of these. So we'll, uh, I'll, I'm gonna get to it and replace and hopefully have some <laughs> heat in the house. All right, so I've got my capacitor here. Um, there's those measurements if you're curious. And I just open this box and we'll just uh, compare to the uh, current one that I have installed. <clears throat> now, I couldn't find the exact same one, but I found uh, a very close light capacitor. Uh, most important parts are to make sure that if you're getting one close, that it's, you know, 5 uh, microfarads and 370 volts. That's really important that, that if you're going to replace a capacitor, whatever your replacement capacitor is, assure that it matches the voltage or... Uh, your new capacitor is larger than the volts. Otherwise, you'll definitely have uh, a large uh, some issues. Um, <clears throat> mine's uh, 5 M MFD, and if you look this up online, uh, in this case it was the Aerovox, and then P50G3705E. That told you it was also a 5 MFD, 370 volts. Obviously, 370 volts. So this is going to be a replacement for this guy. Part number 611798. Uh, I think it's a one-third horsepower motor, fairly common, I suppose, for these uh, for this blower, and uh, nothing much to it. It's an AC motor. Uh, there's a lot of wires here because um, different speeds. Uh, so the windings internally, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe low is 2,500 RPM, high is 5,000 RPM, maybe super high if it even has that capability, a 7,200, something probably like that. Uh, and here's the brand new motor back in the house. Ah, uh, wee. Okay. Oh, I can oof, get a good workout, honestly. That's fantastic. Um, here's some specs if anyone's super curious. I'll try and get that focus in. So I went ahead and turned on the, just the AC fan, no heat, nothing like that, and you can see that she's moving just, just fine. Um, heard a click from the uh, relay switch there, which is exactly what it should do, and she's humming. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we uh, 
uh, aiming for, not a big surprise there. So now it's going to be uh, putting this back together. Uh, and it's clear that there is a huge, huge difference. It's going to be much more efficient now that there's nothing blocking the motor from stopping. So pretty excited to get the heat back on the house. So I got to put all this thing back together. Um, but, you know, she's balanced. She's rotating real well. I'm going to move it all the way up, back and forth, you know, because it can move a little bit. It doesn't rub against anything. I've got it tight. Ooh, magic. All right, so she's done and she's installed. Uh, this is a nice heat shield, so I put some uh, thick zip block, um, not zip block, uh, zip ties, just to make sure that we don't have a bunch of these wires all around because they're pretty long. Um, put them around the perimeter here, nothing special, they're just resting around there so they don't get caught. Um, you can see I went ahead and connect the high voltage back up and it's got the appropriate cover over it and I tightened it so it's nice and snug in there. Um, all the wiring is perfect as it was before, everything connected. I uh, took a picture, like five or six minimum, just one area and then on the other side right here before I disconnected any of them and it came in super handy as you can imagine uh, even a couple days later you go gosh does it go here or does it go there because it's interesting you know you look here and it says W for white Y for yellow R for red green for or G for green C for cyan but yet when you look uh, at some of these wires on the opposite side so here it says white but if you weren't paying attention back here it's certainly not white and it doesn't actually say red on the back side so you really have to be careful and rather than trying to read all of the uh, writing on there, sometimes it's just easier to take a snapshot and you're never wrong because it just, it just like color for color, right? Um, it's nice and secure. And then of course, when the lid goes in, it presses in there and it uh, completes that switch. So I'm gonna put this bottom shield on. Pushed down, she locked and loaded. Woo! Woo! That'll do it. So, I had a wire that I uh, misconnected, um, but my picture showed one, and when I looked real, real carefully, sure enough, I looked at the wrong one. So, got the heat to work just fine, so again, take good pictures and take a lot of them. Not one or two, but five or six at different angles. And they take five or six more at another different angles. You'd be surprised like I was. I'm like, I can't believe. I was trying to troubleshoot why it wasn't getting any uh, light. Sure enough, I did not connect it correctly. So, as you can see, we definitely have fire, flame. All is good in this world. So, probably in about 20, 30 seconds, we should see that fan kick on. And uh, I already tested the AC, worked fine. I tested the uh, fan on and off several different ways just to assure that it was working. It blows more air than has ever blown in this house, so that's fantastic. Makes sense, it's brand new, and we clean, and I cleaned off the, um, uh, the uh, rotor, so. I'm not sure why this is coming off. Don't need more stuff. So at this point, there's the fan. Perfect. Houston, we have liftoff. <laughs> so 